Hey everyone, I'm Alex Batista and this is Costelinha no Sobrecapa, our podcast on every streaming platforms such as iTunes, Castbox, uh, Spotify and Deezer. You can also check us on YouTube on video. So let's start out. Today we have no time to lose. And to introduce our very special guest, I will call here my partner in crime. Here's Lucas Souza. Welcome, Lucas. Hi, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here with you for another podcast, for another video. It's really a huge pleasure. And uh, today we have a really special guest, a truly special guest. My favorite work of our guest is uh, a, a really amazing run in Jonah Hex. Uh, do I need to say more, Alex? So uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Palmiotti. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for being here with us. Well, thanks, guys. It's uh, great to be here. It's uh, my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you once again in, in name of Sobrecapa and ultimatodopaycon.com, our website. We, we just want to, to thank you once again. And just to start, I will uh, let Lucas start because he's the, the, the biggest fan I know of your run on okay. Jonah Hex. So Dang. let's cut to the chase. Lucas, the room is yours. Just do your question and ask your question. Shoot away, thank man. Thank you very much. I, I need to start by saying that I, I'm a really huge fan, fan of Western. I, I really love this, uh, that, that gender. It's, it's awesome. And uh, I think that uh, you have done a, an amazing work in Jonah Hex. It, it, it really connects. It, you have it all. It, it's funny. It, it's tense. You, you have great characters. So uh, my, my question is, uh, are you a, a huge fan of, of Western too? And uh, where does the inspiration came from to write uh, an amazing story in Jonah Hex? Well, I, I, I am a fan of Westerns. I mean, uh, as, as far as a, a, a kid growing up in Brooklyn, New York could be a fan of Westerns, <laughs> it seemed like, the, it seemed like sci science fiction to me, you know, when I, uh, growing up in the city. Um, but I've been a fan of Westerns my whole life. And when I was a kid, I would buy the Jonah Hex comics, you know, uh, in, in the early 70s. Uh, they, they came out all the time and I would buy them. And I loved the character. And it, uh, and it wasn't until uh, many, many, many years later um, as a DC and the opportunity came up. Dan DiDio uh, asked if we want, if Justin Gray and I wanted to write the book. And uh, how we pitched the book would was done in one story. So every issue has one story and usually a different artist so we can get ahead on schedule. And we had so uh, in the first 70 issues, we probably had around, uh, you know, 50 artists working on it. Um, but I've always loved the Westin and we felt we can tell a whole story in 22 pages. You know, um, we didn't need to do part two, part three, part four like mainstream uh, superhero comics, we knew we could tell a story quick. Uh, the character of Jonah is fantastic. You know, he's always been a great character. Um, much better in the comics than on film, that's for sure. Um, and uh, so it was a pretty easy book to write. It just, uh, you know, because I've loved Westerns my whole life and I've uh, done research on the West and uh, you'll notice um, the books don't, treat the American Indians like the movies do, you know, it's more realistic. Um, and again, the book takes place after the American Civil War. So uh, it's very history accurate, the series as well, but that does never gets in the way of uh, telling a story. So it was a, it was a fun book to write. And then uh, with all star Western, we got to explore a little bit more of Gotham in the, in the past and, and then take the book into fantastic places. And that whole series it got wilder and wilder as it, as it went because we didn't want to get the book canceled. The book was always in danger of being canceled. So we had to always up our game with every issue. Amazing. I, I don't know if you, if you know that, but, uh, the, the first, uh, art, artist, Luke Ross, he has done some, uh, some like he, he did some, some fun things with the, the character's face. So yes. some actors from Brazil are in the first issue of the comic book. It's, oh, it okay. was really fun. It was really fun to read the first time because I, I imagine it really looks like an, a Brazilian actor. And so I, I read that it was uh, on purpose. So it yeah. was really fun. We we were lucky to have Luke for a bunch of issues in a row. We got very lucky because um, he was a very busy. He's always a busy artist. He's fantastic. 
Um, but we definitely started the series off with a bang having Luke on it. And, um, you know, of course he modeled, uh, he modeled it after Clint Eastwood, you know, he modeled, uh, Jonah after Clint Eastwood. And I didn't know that about the other actors, but that's very, that kind of makes sense, right. That he would do that. Um, but we, yeah, we were off to a great start with him. I remember the, um, the first issue we had, a uh, we had a kid, he got rabies. And Jonah Hex smothered him with a pillow. And I remember DC Comics coming to us and saying, how can you have him killing a kid in the first issue? And we're like, read the story. Read the story. It makes sense. Um, but but um, Dan DiDio was a huge fan of Jonah Hex. So pretty much he let us do everything. I mean, we, were, we practically edited the book ourselves. We went out and got the talent, everybody involved, uh, you know, on, on the book. and, and um, it was just a great series. Like I said, it never sold a lot, and it's actually completely out of print in the United States. You can't get the back issues. You can't get the trades. Uh, I'm happy you have the trades, Lucas, but you can't even get them here anymore. I'm hoping one day they collect them. They just did this. I'll show you. I just got this. This is uh, this is the wow. so this is the old the uh, Fleischer mm -hmm. Albano, and it's Garcia Lopez and Tony Dezugna. And it's 500 pages of the old books, the, the ones from the 70s I read when I was a kid. And uh, beautiful stuff, you know. Um, wow, wow. So they just, they just did this. And I'm hoping it's not too fancy a package because, I mean, they just reprinted. There's no intro. There's no nothing. They just threw it together. But I'm hoping one day that they'll do an omnibus of the ones we did, you know. It, it, it would be nice. It would make it easier for me because then I'd have some more shelf space. You know. We are hoping too, man. You, you can bet that. On I, that. I, I see, uh, Andre, uh, Alex, Alexandre, you have yeah. a, a, a nice collection behind you on display. I like that. Yeah, I, I just put that over here for our interview. And, yes. Uh, you Very can call nice. me Alex, please. That, that will make Alex, okay. shorter, yeah, shorter and easier. Sure. And uh, while we're on Jonah Hex, I, I want to, to ask you about this one. I just marked it here because in yeah. Brazil, it came on one. All yeah. the collected oh, stories, yeah. and we have here your Jonah Hex, yes, meeting Yosemite Sam. Yeah. So, <laughs> what I can comment on this, uh, uh, as I read, is that you brought Yosemite Sam and and Foghorn Leghorn, Leghorn, uh, to to DC's universe, to Jonah Hex universe, and it's so so I can say round, spherical characters, yeah. because when, when you see them on cartoon, it's like uh, they they do, do not have like dimensity, you know, like the well, you know, Yosemite Sam's always mad, right? He's like, Ooh, I hate coconuts, you know. He's always yelling and screaming, and and um, yeah, and Foghorn Leghorn's always like, ah, I said son, you know, very southern, right? I said, boy, right. this is how you, you know. So they're they're kind of southern characters, so it kind of made sense when. Uh, uh, Dan Dio asked us, like, you know, can you do uh, uh, a Looney Tunes with Jonah Hex? And I said, well, I'll grab the Southern characters because, you know, uh, Jonah is a Southern character. And um, and it's kind of ridiculous, but it's fun. Um, but I will say that every piece of dialogue that Yosemite Sam says in the comic is actually from a cartoon that he was in. So other than him saying somebody's name, all the rest of the dialogue Yosemite Sam says is taken from the actual cartoons. We made a list of everything he said in the cartoons, and then I worked it into the script. So, uh, you know, so it's actually kind of accurate to what Yosemite Sam would say, which is pretty funny. I, I caught some of the, those examples. Uh, yeah. when, when he says like, he, he's been a fisherman and, and worked and, and so on and so forth, and he used to, to hunt. Uh, rabbits and it, it's <laughs> awesome, man. Because he's so, uh, uh, it's a person, man. Yeah, yeah. We, we can believe it's a real person and in Jonah Hex's universe. So, uh, congratulations on, on that. It was, you know, those kind of projects you want to take because they're fun. Like, you know, I grew up with the Looney Tunes cartoons. You guys probably grew up with them. So, the idea of them mixing was like, okay, how are we, how are we going to do this? And, you know, Jonah Hex's book is a violent book. So it's kind of funny to see Yosemite Sam shooting at people and they're actually getting killed, you know, as opposed to when he shoots at Daffy Duck and his beak winds up on the other side of his head. Yeah, you know? 
it's a little bit it's a little bit different but uh, i'm glad you liked it alex and concerned about his life and you know going on chasing prostitutes whatever <laughs> it's another dimension and when he slaps the, the prostitute i was shocked i just got to I called my wife and said, look at this, man. It's <laughs> insane. It's terribly insane. So in a good way. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, uh, another thing I, I want to ask, um, I don't know. Lucas, I'm moving forward here. You want to... to uh, Just one ask last me? Jonah Hex question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I really like Jonah Hex, so I, I really need to, to ask that. Uh, you created a lot of characters for the, for the Jonah Hex uh, universe, for the Jonah Hex comic book. Is there a, a favorite one? I, I, person, I personally loved uh, Talula Black. I think it was a, a really different character, and, and it really added a lot. To the, to the comic book, but uh, I don't know. Do you have another character or, or a favorite one? It, it, uh, it definitely, for, for me, it, it definitely is Tallulah Black because um, it, it's a character we created. Uh, we needed somebody that was on the same level of Jonah, like just as badass and just as troublemaking. And then when they got together, everything went crazy. Um, And actually, the uh, story of Tallulah Black is actually our bookend. So, like, you, you know, when we have the 50th issue with Jonah and Tallulah, like, they go through a life change. And then when we did the last issue of All-Star Western, of course, it was with Tallulah, and they go off into the sunset. So she's she was one of our most important characters, the most fun character to write. And... Um, We were hoping one day to get like a, a Tool of the Black miniseries or something, but the books never sold enough that they would let us do something like that. But uh, maybe one day, who knows? Yeah. Okay, I'm changing subjects now. Sure. And uh, what I want to ask is like, some people don't know, but you often, often write uh, with your partner in, in writing, Amanda Connor. Yes. And okay. uh, yeah. some people don't know she's also your wife. Right. So... <laughs> How how is that dynamic? Because it works uh, for our for for the readers, right? For me, it it, it works perfectly, you know. And um, how it is this dynamic? Because uh, uh, sometimes I don't know if we can feel what is the input of of one or the other, but I, I believe we can spot sometimes. So, sometimes. How, how do you get in 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 the the middle? You'd be surprised because Amanda's got a great sense of humor. A lot of the humor is Amanda's. Um, we work together, you know, every day. And um, it's sort of, we have the same sense of humor. Like we have the sense of humor of like a 10 year old. And, um, and we love comics. We love the characters and we love the, you know. So working with her is like easy. Like it's like working with your best friend. And, uh, and then no matter what we write, she has to go and draw it. And it always comes out better than we imagine because she's a terrific storyteller. Um, but it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's probably my favorite way to work is with her. You know, if I'm going to work on something, working with her on power girl, working with her on Harley, like these books stand out. They're, they're different. They have a different tone. They have a sense of humor. Um, as you notice, a lot of comics, humor is a tough thing to write. You can write tough guys. You can write scary But humor is very like, you know, you can either you're good at it or you're horrible at it. Um, and uh, so with Amanda, we, 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 I think, you know, we're a good combo and it makes sense for characters like Harley, especially and, and Power Girl, you know, that there's a sense of humor about them. And uh, sometimes it's dark humor, but um, the combination with the both of us, I always say is a better product than the two of us separate. Meaning we do things separately, it's good. When we're together, it's it becomes special. So hope that answers that. that that's great. I, I just want to take that hook because yeah. on, on your Harley, you know, we're talking about DC's fourth pillar here. And and the the main part of what you guys wrote is what makes Harley today what she is. On right. these comments, right. but the first issue of Out on the City, uh, the the Harley number zero, I mean, yeah, it has a, it it goes beyond, in my opinion, because <laughs> it, it takes you have a, a page, each page is a different artist, 
Yeah. And you have like that, that breaking of the fourth wall. So we hear Amanda and you talking on how to decide how the comic is going to be. Yes. And we, yeah. We wanted to do something different with that. You know, um, you know how that happened though. I, I was in San Diego comic con and uh, we just got the job to do Harley. And I had a dream. I woke up in the morning and I had a dream that we did an issue where it was a different artist on every page. And we went to breakfast with Dan DiDio at one of the hotels. And I said, look, I got this idea where Harley is being done by all different artists and she wants to pick one to draw her book. Like she gets to pick it. And Dan just looked at me and he says, well, uh, you can do it, but you have to get me all the artists by the end of the weekend. You have to give me the whole list of every artist. So Amanda and I went around with a piece of paper and we went to each com comic con, we each to the creator's table and said, will you do a page in the book? You know, will you? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, Adam, you said yes. Becky Coonan said yes. And then we gave the list to Dan by the end of the weekend. And he go, he looked at it and he said, okay, right. We'll give you a Harley Quinn zero. Why not? And uh, and that's how that happened. So it was just a weird dream I had. And um, it's funny because when we gave everybody the pages to do, they didn't make sense. And once we were done with the pages, we put them in order and then we wrote it. You know, we wrote the dialogue so it makes sense as you read it. But it was a, it was a crazy job. I wouldn't recommend anybody doing it because it's a, it's you have to really be you have to really figure things out. Um, but it was. But it turned out really well because it was a comic book. It's one of those comics when I sign them, it looks like everybody's trying to get all the autographs on the cover of everybody that's in it, which is next to impossible great, now. Man. It's next to impossible now because Darwin Cook passed away. So that's one guy you can't get anymore. So sadly. But uh, sadly. a lot of fun, though. And, and how, how dangerous was that? Because some of the jokes... Uh, there, there are some shots fired at DC in one or two. <laughs> so, uh, how dangerous was really uh, for uh, you and, and Amanda? Okay, so if it was done now, none of that would pass. If that <laughs> book came out now, nothing. They, it wouldn't come out now. Okay, for back, me, it's enough. <laughs> okay. for back, back then, because Dan DiDio was in charge, um, Dan was a big comic book fan. He let stuff go. <laughs> he just was like. Who cares if you're making fun of me? Go ahead and do it, you know? Um, now it's very corporate. You know, AT&T bought Warner Brothers, and it's very corporate. Now, uh, you know, I don't think anything like that would go very well right now. So we did it. It was the right thing at the right time. In one shot, I, I, I promise, Lucas, I will no, not a problem. give you the please, word. Please. <laughs> uh, in one, one of the... the, the, the they say this is material for Black Label. Uh, would you like to to write a, a, a Harley a comic on Black Label? Yeah, that's it. That's a Black Label book. So yeah. these are these are uh, issue one and two. Although this one's a special one that you can draw in. But um, so in in the United States, these are out right now. So it's a Black Label book, and um, it's a, it's. Um, I'll show you the inside a little bit. It's a little, it's a little wilder, you know. It's a little, uh, a man. Yeah. It, um, you know, a lot of people in bed. Wow, <laughs> yeah, black label, great. Um, so I was curious to see that, man. Yeah, so hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll, uh, eventually they'll collect it and put it out with you guys. The uh, fourth issue isn't out yet. It comes out in like a month. So once they get it all, you know how you guys get it. They collect it into one book. Yeah. And you'll get it down there. So you'll get it. The, you know, the only thing is the black label, it's extreme. You can do violence. You can do language, you know, cursing and all that. But you can't have nudity. Okay. So um, we cover everything tiny. You know, Amanda does like a little tease kind of art, you know. We, get, we try to get away with everything we can. <laughs> Yeah, we we remember the 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 Batman the Bruce and Sam. Yeah. Uh, the battle was like the battle. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, now I, read it. That kind of distorted. Once they did Batman's penis, they <laughs> others said no more. No. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, okay. So Lucas, now you have it, man. 
Thank you very much, uh, Jimmy. We when we take a look at for when we take a look at our at your work, we saw some some differences in in your in your comic books. Like uh, Jonah Hex is violent, uh, Harley Quinn it's more funny. Uh, Power Girl, I, I really love that 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 uh, comic book. It's also more funny, more more uh, more, more funny. I think it's the the right work. Do yeah. you feel your uh, Writing style changes a lot. When when you start working on a on a comic book, do you think, uh, all right, this is gonna be more violent or this is gonna be more funny or it's something that comes naturally? How how is that process of finding the the comic book voice? Yeah, there's, there's like a balance. Um, I I think like real life. I think real life is kind of funny, if not ironic, at times. Um, even when things are crazy in our lives, there's always room for humor. Um, so I always have some humor in my books. I feel like, I feel like comics should be fun. Um, if you want to write, you know, like Batman where it's always dark all the time and the joke is always dark. And I, I feel like a lot of people are doing that. So that's great. But I like a little humor. I like a little variety. I also like genres, you know, I like, I like the, uh, I like horror. I like science fiction. I like westerns. You know, I like things be beyond superheroes. You know, superheroes are great, but I do like to to do different kinds of books. You know, um, so I don't know. I I I don't really think about if I have a style or anything. I do. I will say there is always a bit of humor, even if it's dark humor. Um, I like and I like my movies with humor. All my favorite movies have a little a little playfulness to them. You know. You, Even a movie, you look at a movie like Die Hard, you know, it's great, it's action, but there's always a humor in it, you know, it's kind of funny in scenes too, and it's kind of screwed up funny, uh, and I feel that's like what my books I like to do, I like to have a little bit of humor um, in the dark stuff, but I also like an emotional connection, I want you to care uh, about the character and what's going on, and, um, you know, so that's very important to the books. Awesome, and it, and it makes sense because uh, in your Jonah Hex, we saw some some really dark humor uh, stories, and and that's that's great. That's awesome. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Alex. Okay, I'm back here. Uh, you talked about horror, and you talked about uh, people caring for the characters. My next question is about the Hill Have Eyes, the beginning. Uh, we don't have that comic book here in Brazil. Okay. But I got to read it, and uh, I'm a huge, huge fan. I was talking about this movie uh, uh, because it's a remake of Wes Craven's uh, classic yep. on the 70s, and uh, how it was to approach this prequel story in a way that we we, we actually root for the people on the hill. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's crazy. For me, it was crazy because uh, I had horror of those guys Uh, since the the West Craven version, sure. and now the, the 2006 version, and then I, I see myself like rooting for the bad guys on your comic book. How was your approach on that? And it's perfect. Thank you once again for the the great work, man. Sure. I mean, so so you know, huge fan of West Craven, right? And when I got the gig, uh, Justin, I got the gig. You know, I said to him, I said, all right, if we're gonna do it, where it's how how those guys got into the hills. Why, why were they up in the hills? Um, it would be obviously from radiation poisoning. And, you know, th that was the scenario that Wes Craven set up. That's why it was in the desert. So our approach was to show how, what happened to them to get to that place. And, um, yeah, and, and, and to sympathize with them. They realized that they were in a situation they couldn't get out of and, you know, and it messed with their brains. And of course, by the end of it, they're crazy. They're all crazy. And that's why the Hills have eyes is a great movie because those guys are frightening in that movie. Um, it's funny. We wrote that after the new remake came out, which was very good movie too. the remake of the Hills have eyes. And we wrote it, it came out. And then the second movie came out which was not good the the second newer one um and we were at new york comic-con justin and i and wes craven asked us to have breakfast with him and uh we had breakfast with wes craven which was really cool 
and he had our book and he said he said to us he goes this should have been the next movie not the one that just came out he goes your book is the one we should have shot and i don't think there's any greater compliment than the guy who created the movie saying he should have shot our book uh next it was like the most flattering thing um but he he also said what you said he goes you know it's a big stretch for you to empathize with the bad guys. Um, but you guys did it and did it in a place where you, you feel sorry for the situation they're in. But by the end of the story, you're like, that's the situation. And, you know, now they're monsters and there's nothing you can do about it. So uh, it was an interesting book. I, I, you know, we did it for Fox Atomic, which is a company that literally put out two, two comics owned by Fox entertainment. And uh, it never, it, they never reprinted it. I don't know what happened to it, but I am very proud of the book. I, I, I loved writing it. Um, I've only written a couple of books, horror books. I've written that and a Friday the Thirteenth series, and then uh, Random Acts of Violence, which was uh, one that was just made into a movie. So, uh, yeah. So and again, another genre with uh, that one was didn't have that much humor in it. The Hills of Eyes one. That one was just scary and creepy. <laughs> And, and, and again, it's like a, a, a very, very good work because it's very difficult when you have to 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 tangle with these things. Like in, in Silence of the Lambs, when when they they chose to tell the story of you know Hannibal Lecter, you, right. sometimes if it's not very well done, and, and and here in the Hills Have Eyes, the beginning, it's amazing because you again you give dimension to those monsters and. We can see it, but you, you never take away all the bad stuff they're doing. So right, congratulations right. once again. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, to me it was like, uh, you know, you, you tell the tale of American Indians where uh, where people came into this country and wiped out, uh, stole the land and wiped out people and called it their own. And it's a sto it's like that in a way. It's like people who, not, who don't want to move, they were there first, and yet, somebody more powerful pushes them out and things go bad. So it's a story that I think every nation, every, every uh, place has to tell. And it's always a sad one because we know in the end power and money and these things step on people, you know, left and right, you know, it's, it's, it sucks, but it's a story we all know. I'm, I'm going to ask something that uh, our audience always ask us to, to ask for the authors who, who talk with us in, okay. in our podcast. Uh, and I really like, like that question. Uh, for those who doesn't really know your work, Jimmy, that, that hasn't had the opportunity to, to, to read some comic books that, that you have done, uh, which ones do you recommend them to, to know your work? I, I personally always recommend this guy, this Jonah Hex. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you said it's difficult to get it in USA, but uh, it, it's not that difficult to get it in Brazil. That's you great. Go to, to some, uh, to some uh, online stores, and uh, it's, it's possible to get those. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, it's possible. So uh, it's always my recommendation. But uh, I want to hear from you. Uh, what do you think, uh, which comic books do you select for those who are wanting to know your more of your work. Okay, yeah, there's a couple. So uh, if I go back in time a little bit, I'll say like something like Painkiller Jane, which was a character Joe Casado and I created, and Ash. I don't know if those books are down there, but you know, uh, those are two we have. Of course, Jonah Hex, uh, Power Girl for Amanda and I, Vampirella. Uh, we worked on Vampirella for years. Um, of course, our Harley Quinn run. Our, a Power Girl run. I'm trying to think. Uh, and then I would say like uh, the Marvel Knights titles. So uh, Joe and I did uh, Daredevil with Kevin Smith. And uh, I did The Punisher with Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. We did uh, Welcome Back Frank would be uh, another one. I've done enough work that there's something for everybody. Um, uh, there's some stuff called G.I. Zombie, which was a series I did. Um, again, not everything's been translated. So, um, you know, uh, but... Uh, It's pretty easy. I mean, I have a film. I have a website called uh, Paper Films. The two words, paper and film, dot com, and uh, it pretty much has everything I've done on the website. So if you go there, look through. If there's something interesting, you know, give it a shot. But uh, you know, uh, 
I would say the basic, the big company stuff is the stuff that you guys would know, which was Daredevil, Punisher, Harley, you know, uh, uh, Painkiller Jane. Those are the main ones. Do you have a favorite work? Uh, the, the one that you can say like, wow, that's my, that's my favorite one. That's the one it, it, it really, uh, I want it to be remembered for or something like that. I, 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 uh, I have a couple, I have a book called monolith, the monolith that I did that I, I love. Uh, I would say Jonah hex 50 is one of my favorite books. Um, I would say uh, there's a lot of Harley Quinn I'm very proud of, and the, and the uh, I don't have one in I don't really have one in particular because I, I like them for different reasons, you know. Um, but I do like I do like Jonah Hex 50, the one by Darwin Cook with Tallulah Black. That's like my favorite issue, other than the last All Star Western issue with them again with Darwin Cook. Um, Darwin was a very close friend of mine, so that it was. Um, Justin and I had a great time working with them, so that those books will always be special. Um, but yeah, that's it. I don't know. Everybody's taste is different. I say Daredevil. Some people like Punisher more. I don't know. You know, it's variety is good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, I, I I'd like to to ask you if you still got got time. Yeah. I'd like to ask you about two two things more. Uh, yeah. The first one would be Harley Quinn and Gossamer. Uh, yeah. Why to choose Gossamer? Because it, it, the character everybody knows, but ne nobody knows the name. Nobody knows his name. Um, people just knew he was the big red guy. Um, we just thought that Harley likes to talk, and having a character that doesn't talk would be fun to do. And um, and she, and you know she's red. She's got all her red and black, and he's big red. And we just thought it would be a fun combination. And uh, and um, We, we actually, the story is actually a, a sort of sideways adaptation of the Bugs Bunny cartoon where he falls asleep in his hole and it floods, it's rainstorm and it floods and his mattress goes down the river to the castle and that's where meets the scientist guy and the big red, you know, and, and, and Gossamer. So we did a version of that in the comics, but they were asking us who we wanted to team Harley up with. And my first reaction was Bugs Bunny, but they... We really we view Harley as the Bugs Bunny of the DC universe. You know, she's a wise guy. She's always ahead of the curve. She can be violent. Um, so Gossamer was our choice, and Amanda loves drawing Gossamer. And yeah, that was basically it. We we didn't have a lot of time to dig in. We just had to do it pretty quick and get it done. So, uh, and I had the Pierre Brito, who's amazing, uh, do the book. So he he was fantastic, fantastic artist. So. I, I thought fantastic to see Gossamer in a style that reminded me of Chuck Jones' style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and he, doing nails. And I, I remember at first uh, for uh, the, 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 the cartoon, the original cartoon. Yeah. So, once again, great. And the last one has come back to me. Wonder Woman, she is up in front. And uh, um, it's like an adventure the kind of hunger games kind of like yeah. you know mixing a lot of different things and yeah. uh again i can see uh, things that reminded me of john burns or um when superman goes in exile uh in space and a lot of of, of different um, genre. Genre. yeah so well, so that book so that book you have there is a collection But they're actually, I think they're 10 or 12 page stories. So this was a digital comic that came out like every week or two. And so we wrote it like a, like a, uh, a continued next week kind of thing where as you're reading it, it keeps going and getting bigger and the story gets wilder. And it's all of a sudden it's on an island. All of a sudden there's monsters. All of a sudden it's in outer space. Um, so we wrote it, Amanda and I wrote it, we were writing it. As a, as a weekly or bi-weekly uh, adventure. So how you're getting it is one big book with all of the story, but how it was originally delivered was in these little chapters that kept coming out and kept coming out and kept coming out. And um, so we were happy they collected it, but it is a, an eclectic book. I mean, we put Jonah Hex in it. We took it, we have uh, Wonder Woman on a, another planet and solar systems. We have an island with monsters. We just wanted... I didn't want to tell a Wonder Woman story 
about the Amazonians and about her history. I wanted to do a story about Wonder Woman having to deal with stuff she never had to deal with before and having fun. And of course, adding the other characters into the story made it that much more fun. So it, it, it was, uh, you can tell, it almost feels like a, a um, little story sewn together. To those at home, I just want to say that uh, one thing I said in my review of this comic, if you are a new reader, this is a very great way to start reading because it gives you uh, uh, some dimension on who Wonder Woman is, yeah. who Wonder Woman fights for, and it, it, it brings you everything from Jonah Hex to space, from Wild West to an island in nowhere. So it, it's a perfect way for you to start reading Wonder Woman comics so give it a shot. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Yeah, uh, this, 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 yeah. this is the kind of fun, fun book that if it was a movie, you couldn't do it. But because it's a comic book, it has no budget. We can go, we can add anything we want. And uh, so we made it a really big story. Although I think it opens up with a small forest fire. I think it opens up with Wonder Woman dealing with a forest fire. But then it eventually goes crazy. So uh, I just want to mention... That's the beauty of comics. We don't have a budget. We do everything and anything. I can imagine how bad it was to wait for another week to read the the 10, 12 pages uh, of the next chapter because uh, it, it's uh, in my opinion, it's a comic book that you, the comic book that you read uh, and it it really takes your breath away. You 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 just need to read and and to know what's going to happen. So it, it's really fast. Like Alex said, it's uh, I think it's perfect for new readers actually all those comic books from that uh from that dc comics initiative uh those were really good for for new new starters new readers like yeah. the, the batman one uh i believe it was done by tom king no no it was done by Bendis. yeah Brian michael bendis. Bendis. bendis yes uh it was awesome it was it has jonah hex too in in the yeah. in the comic book so it was an amazing work. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Okay. And for uh, at, for the last bit, uh, we are talk we're talking about uh, fun things, um, the, the humor on your comics, and also the violence. And there is something that mix everything up. There is one, uh, um, your more authorial, if I can call that, I don't like these these labels, but uh, it, it's more an alternative comic from you. That is uh, Pop Kill. Oh yeah, the Kickstarter. Yeah, so yeah. that's um so that's uh, a book I did with uh, Dave Johnson. It's on a Kickstarter. I I don't know if you guys get the shipping down there, but you can get the digital level. You can get the digital books uh, for sure. And it's it's basically uh, like a James Bond. Adventure James Bond meets a so competing soda companies and it has uh violence and nudity and language and it's not for the kids. It is definitely not for the kids out there, but it's a book we did ourselves. We published ourselves through the Kickstarter. And um and it and it is it hits a couple of different genres. It hits uh like like again, like again, it's it's like an espionage slash James Bond uh with sexy women and uh oversexed men and um, it's, it's about these two competing soda companies that are owned by brothers. So they hate each other and they try to ruin each other's business by hiring these spies and these thieves. And, um, it's, it's kind of a crazy book, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. And it's, uh, drawn by, uh, Juan Santa Cruz and Amanda's done some covers. Dave's done some covers. The new ones we have Adam Hughes did a cover. That's amazing, and uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. So uh, yeah, it's out now. We got we got like two more weeks. You can back it if you're interested in it. Check it out. At least check it out. There's the address right there, right there, yeah, right there. <laughs> and we have like the, this is the final two chapters. Like we had the the how can we get the first two ones? Uh, so right on, the, on the Kickstarter, we have it that you can get all four issues. So we have a, a digital. Levels, so you don't have to have any mail or any shipping because you know that costs a fortune. You know that from the states, um, but you can get the digital levels, and I think it's twenty dollars American. I, I, I and um, it has all four issues, so it's the whole story, and they're, they're oversized books, so they're not twenty pages; they're thirty-two pages each. So uh, 
you know, it's a hundred, it's almost 140 pages with, and it comes with sketchbooks and it comes with interviews and it, all that kind of stuff. So it's a really nice, it's a really nice package for the price. So you should check it out. Great. Lucas? Awesome. Uh, I just need to, to thank you and to thank Jimmy for those for these amazing interviews. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, I always tell Alex that uh, it's awesome to read comic books, but uh, when we we start to understand it, to understand how the author thinks, uh, the, the comics book, the, the comic books, they they get more alive. You know, it, it, it's much better. And uh, I don't know. I, I I'm probably going to read again, like Jonah Hex, Harley Quinn, and Wonder Woman. It was awesome. Thank you very much, Amy. Well, uh, Lucas, hang on one second. I gotta to make your day, Lucas. I gotta I gotta do this for you because I, I think I probably sh I probably should have put this on in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. great, man. <laughs> 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 I just didn't think of it. Um, it's a very urban cowboy, I know. But uh, that's, that's the awesome. part, man. Hey, you awesome. got like this, though. I I really hope you you have uh, another ch shot at Jonah Hex because uh, I I will be thrilled to read other comic books. Uh, of, well, thank you, buddy. Yeah. I'm, we're working right now. I'm working with uh, Chad Harden, who is the artist on uh, Harley, and we're working on a western right now um not jonah hex but we're doing a pretty cool one you'll, you'll hear about it soon it'll be for next year wow awesome awesome thank you very much all right man well great talking to you guys okay i want i want to thank you once again uh in in the name of sobre Capa, our channel and ultimatodobacon.com our website it's been an honor to talk to you we hope to to talk to you again sometime in the future and um the space is always open if you want to talk to Brazilian fans. We are always open here to you. Okay? All right. Sounds great. I hope to come down there too one day. See you guys in person. That would be perfect, man. Yeah. That would be perfect. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. So if you're still with us, we want to thank you for your audience. We've been here with Jimmy Palmiotti, and we hope you check out his comics. He's an amazing writer, and he's been gracious to come see this interview with us. So check out the other videos on the channel and click on the logo to uh, subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, man. Thanks. <laughs>